All right, so now that we kind of have a foundation and now that we have an understanding a little bit of like my own background and a little bit of those questions of, of you know, what's unique about wine. And I mean, you know, in class we, we're, we'll, we'll kind of like dive into like all of those possibilities. Like wine is typically thought of as more kind of elitist, right? It's thought of as more exclusive, more expensive. You think of like about wine and cheese dinners as opposed to like, beer and pizza, um, you know, you think about wine as it relates to that kind of pretentiousness with the swirl, and then you, you know, and you're like, oh, hoity-toity, right? Like, there's undoubtedly stigmas, and there's undoubtedly um, ways of thinking about wine um, that, you know, s stereotypes and stereotypically um, sometimes match up. Like, wine tastings can be, you know, kind of snobby sometimes. But also, as we approach wine, still thinking about it kind of in respect for, like, what it is. And, I mean, it's, an, it's a type of alcohol, right? And it's a type of alcohol that, that, again, spans thousands of years, has a long history with religion, has a long history with society, sometimes higher society, right? But it also has a long history with philosophy, right? Um, and I maybe have mentioned this in, in other videos or maybe mentioned this at the start of class, but, you know, one of the great kind of platonic um, stories is called the Symposium, which is when a bunch of Greeks got drunk together on wine and they talked about sex and they talked about relationships and they talked about what uh, friendship is and, like, wine was a central component. There's also the Greek god named Dionysus, uh, and she's the, the goddess of wine. And, I, and, and so, I mean, when we think about wine, like, historically, I know that there are people that have much greater knowledge than I. Um, and, and once we start to think about, like, the history of wine, and once we really start to unpack the history of wine, I mean, it is rich, right? And it is, it is entwined with various cultures, various um, practices, and isn't necessarily just thought of as, you know, the hoity-toity kind of exclusive drink, but rather has some great significance. What I want to introduce you all to in this video, and and um, I'm not sure how long it'll go, but what I want to introduce, introduce you to in this video, and this will continue to allow us to build moving forward, um, and it allows to build moving forward to a concept that relates to wine called terroir. And I want to put that term on your radar today because I think a week from today, so a week from this Tuesday, we're going to more specifically dive into the topic of terroir and um, actually look at one of the articles from Handling the Hard Stuff as it relates to terroir. Um, but essentially what terroir does is it, it denotes and, and, it, and it speaks to all of the unmeasurable things in the wine. Okay? So again, we'll dive more deeply into that uh, a week from Tuesday week from today. But what I want to get us most acquainted with out of the gates here, and, and ask, I think, some really worthwhile questions um, after we kind of set some parameters, is I want to discuss and I want to talk about um, the distinction between old world wines and new world wines and why that's important. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause again, just because keeping these short uploads much faster um, and then in the next video we will hit the ground running um, looking at the difference between old world wines and new world wines.